Hi, I'm Christian Jones, and today we've come to the beautiful uh, Westwood Lakes complex. We're on the Skylark Lake, which is a typical Snake Lake type venue with a good mixture of carp and F1s. What we've come to talk about today is if you've not done a lot of Snake Lake fishing, where do you fish and how do you approach one of these venues? It can be a bit daunting, especially this time of year when the fish aren't really feeding, you've got to find the fish. Picking the right depth for water and picking the right baits is going to make or break your session. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. Well, bait choice on snake lakes needs to be kept dead simple. I always tend to bring the same baits with me, to be honest, and this really helps because you get to know what bait and where in your peg to fish with each bait. First thing talking about bait today is it's a really rainy day and it, as it often is in the winter, you've got to keep your bait in good condition. So I always protect it with a hooded side tray. That is so important because if you, get your maggots wet, get your ground bait wet. It just knackers your days fishing before you've even started. So firstly with bait, I bought some fishery micro pellets. I've done about a pint today. That is probably still well too many. I always do a few extra just in case. The way I prepared these, I've put my bait in the tub, covered them level with water and just left them to swell up nice and big. And that is all I do. I don't need to drain them off or anything. I want them to swell up nice and big. So they're nice individual pellets. When I'm fishing with pellets on the hook, I only ever use a four mil expander. These are just the Blake's four mil expanders. The way I prepared these, straight into a food bag, covered them level with water again, tied them down tight. No need to pump them or anything. And then when I put them on the hook, the weight of the hook will sink the pellet. The next bait is the bait I wouldn't be without in winter, it's just some red maggots. I always tend to bring red maggots in the winter, we've got about two pints today, that should be again ample for a day's fishing. That's dead simple. And finally, if you are struggling for bites, one of the best baits I find is a bit of ground bait and not a lot of people bring this in winter, but I just feel like you've got to always have it with you. Um, the ground bait I always use is pure ground expander from Blake's, dead simple product and I just mix it one to one. So one pint of ground bait, one pint of water, mix it up in your tub, pass it through a riddle, within half an hour it'll be perfect. Finally, we've got some bread. One slice of bread covered up in a uh, punch case like this, a few different sizes of punches. If you draw on a few fish and there's a little area with a nice feature, you can dob around them and hopefully catch a few carp. So there you go, that's my whole bait for today. Um, nice and cheap, probably cost no more than a tenner for all the bait you'll need. And to be fair, the bait I've bought with me today would probably last a couple of sessions. So the rigs I've set up today are dead simple. I've only set three rigs up, which covers all the depths I need to fish with all the baits today. Um, my first rig I'm gonna talk about is my pellet rig for a cross. This is gonna be for fishing between two to three foot of water. Firstly, we're gonna start with the elastic. I've got a Preston Tenjora Hollow which because there's a few carp in this lake, I've decided to use this as opposed to the normal eight hollow or single six I might use where there's more F1s. Just gives me the better chance of landing better fish, but I still won't lose F1 skimmers if I hook it and uh, it's a bit docile. So that's the, that, that choice. My main line's 016, nice and durable. I won't ever go up to an 016 hook length. So I know I'm covered for that. Um, and it just stops me rig tangling and keeps it nice and durable all day. I've got two back shot, two number eights. Um, again, these venues, when there's a little bit of wind on them, they tend to skim a lot. So if I hold my back shot nice and level with the water, I'll just keep me float in place, especially when we're fishing on the slope and I need to be really accurate. That's dead important, that. The floats are 4 by 12 Dink from RW. These are absolutely perfect for pellets. They've got a wire stem which just gives your top part of your rig a bit of stability and holds it right where you want it. Going down to the shotting pattern, just a simple strung bulk of number nine shot. Um, they're about an inch apart and that is just to keep your rig nice and anchored on the slope. Short four inch hook length for showing the bites up well. That's 012 line with a 16 Super LWG hook, which just sinks me expander lovely like I talked about before. Um, the reason why I've gone for 012 hook length is because, again, we could hook some carp. Generally, where I go, say, Partridge Tunnel Barn, where it's more F1s, I would look to use an 010 hook length, but we're just going to stick for 012 today. So the second rig is the maggot rig. Everything's the same on this rig, same 
elastic, I've got my back shot, 016 mainline, but the float is a 4x10 Maggie from Richie Wilson, which is a carbon stem, which is just so I can flip my rig in and it will slowly fall through the water and follow my shot down, which I find better with maggots. The shot is exactly the same, a little strong bulk, but I've got number 11s on this. And again, a four inch hook length and an 18 Super LWG, which is just a little bit smaller being proportioned with the bait. The final rig is the trap rig for the short line. Quite deep here short, so to be honest, on this peg. Um, so I've opted for a 4x14 Maggie, bit heavier float, just to hold my rig nice and still. Coming down to a bulk of number 9 shot and two number 11 droppers. The reason I tend to fish with a bulk when I'm fishing in the deeper water is because I only want to be catching them fish in the last 18 inch of my rig. I don't need it strung out all the way up the line. I just want to be able to drop my rig in, let it follow the shot down to the bulk and just my last two droppers um, come in and present the bait to the fish. Because it's a bit deeper, I've gone for a slightly longer hook length, six inch hook length, again of 012 and a 16, um, sorry, an 18 Super LWG hook quite easy in winter to blow your peg up quite quick by introducing too much feed too early in the session. The best way to regulate this is to have a little selection of these pole mounted pots for different scenarios so you're feeding the right amount of bait all the time. Firstly I've got the smallest pot what I'm going to use. This is a small guru pot. It's got a little sprinkle top on the top so I can just tap a bit of bait in and this is the ultra negative uh, sort of start to your match with this pot just tap a little bit of bait in 10 maggots a few micro pellets and just jade gauge your response from there i always tend to start with this pot the next sort of progression onto this is the medium pot same again it's got the sprinkle lid this is for tapping a little bit more bait in just sprinkling a few more maggots in a few more micros or if i want to feed multiple lines say i have two lines on the go across i can go out if it takes about double the amount of bait as my small pot, I can go out on one line, feed a few micros, feed a few on the other, and then I'm keeping two lines going at once. So that's a good use for this pot. The next pot I use is if I'm getting a few liners and I'm fishing with pellets, and I just wanna keep the fish pinned down to the bottom, I use my small frenzy pot here, which is just a pot for just capping a few micros in, dropping it low to the water and getting me bait straight down to the bottom and trying to stop line bites. If the fishing's good, that is generally the pot I will use. And then finally, when you're fishing down the middle in the deeper water, you tend to have to feed a little bit more bait. So my medium pot with the open lid like this is used for dumping a few maggots in. Again, like the pellet pot I've just spoke about, but dumping your maggots in, I use that pot, medium guru pot with the larger lid. But none of these pots have got too much bait in which is gonna completely kill your peg. So what I just wanna talk about now is plumbing up and choosing where to fish. When you're on a Snake Lake venue such as Skylark, you've got a lot of options of depths and it can be quite confusing for people to decide where to fish. A general rule I tend to stick to is, first rig I'll plumb up is the deepest water in my peg. So I'll go out, I'll plumb that up, I'll explore my deepest water, find a nice bit where I want to fish, and then I'll come back and I'll see what depth it is on my depth markers. Today we've got sort of five and a half foot. So I tend to then look for around mid depth for when I'm fishing across and in the edges. So I've got five and a half foot today, I'm going to be fishing sort of two and a half foot deep across and in the edges. So that's my next move. I'll then set a rig up, set it roughly to the depth I want to fish and go and plumb it up quickly. Try and find a nice flat area across and flat areas in the edge where I might be wanting to fish and then I'll just start with one line at the start and see what happens, see if it's right, see if I get bites and if it is, if it's good and I'm getting some bites, I'll then look to open up more lines. One key thing when you're plumbing up I want to talk about is to plumb up to the bottom of the body you float so just give yourself a bit of line on the bottom to keep your hook bait nice and still. This is quite important as a lot of people tend to think winter fishing, F1s, you need to be plumbed up real dead depth and it's not so good because I just think your bait can move, you get a bit of skim, a bit of wind and it's just not good presentation. Well, we're just going to start the session now 
and it's quite windy today but i'm going to start across on pellets because it just gives you the best chance of getting a good initial start and what i always want to do is go in try and settle myself in get a few bites and work out am i in the right depth am i on the right bait so we're going to go straight in i put a formal expander on the hook and i've just put a few micros in my smallest pot what i was talking about and i'm just going to go across and tap a few micros in and see if i get any signs and it's important to sort of just go in just be patient at the start so we don't know how good or bad it's going to be today it can be brilliant on this lake but it's getting cold now we're getting later and later in the year and you've just got to start softly softly sort of approach tiny bit of bait just try and get me rig right on top of it and sit it nice and still and just concentrate keep your back shot level with the water and just try and concentrate on holding me rig on top of me bait so initially i'm just going to try and be patient just looking out for any sort of signs Oh, I think I had a little sign then, but I'm just going to lay my rig back in. So hopefully that's a good indication that some fish come straight to that bait. So you can tell the wind is really tricky today. problem you can often have in the winter is the wind is a bit, it's quite tricky. And if, oh, just up the fish now. But what I was going to say is if the wind's quite tricky and you can't catch on your short line and the edges aren't great, you sometimes just have to make the best of a bad situation. Hopefully later in the session we will catch short and in the edges. But for now, just to start the day, just trying to catch what I can across and just try and get a good start to the session. But nice that we've gone in first feed and we've upped the fish and it feels like a reasonable fish. Sort of tells us as well that we're sort of in and around the correct depth for water at two and a half foot what we started on. And I always tend to sort of start on pellets. If it's still reasonably mild, I always tend to start on pellets because it gives you, I think, the best chance of catching them easy and catching decent fish. Oh, and it's even a nice barbel. But I will not hesitate to swap some maggots later in the session if pellets dries up. So, nice start to the day. Decent barbel. Flip him in the net. And back on with another pellet. So I've had six or seven fish across now, mainly nice big F1s. Um, but I am really am struggling to present my rig properly and I've been loose feeding a few maggots short. I'm sort of itching to get on it because I feel like I'll just have far better pre presentation and control over what I'm doing. So just get this in and then I think I'm going to have a switch to the short maggot line. Looks like another decent F1. Cracking fish. Let's get on them maggots, see if a few fish are there. Right. So I've just gone in on my maggot line. 
and I've just caught my first fish on it and as it seems, tends to get later in the day this line can really come good and you can catch a big weight fast so what I'm trying to do now is I've been loose feeding it all day through the match 10 or 12 maggots all the time now I'm just trying to concentrate the fish pot a little trap of maggots and sit and be patient because we're catching quality fish today we're not looking for loads and loads of bites but good fish this one looks like a barbel another nice barbel on maggots hopefully there'll be a few more of them there for us to catch pop them in the net And now because it's quite deep down the middle, like I say, I've been loose feeding it all through the day, but if I go in now and keep loose feeding it, especially because we've got quality fish in the peg, I could quite easily foul up fish, and especially with big fish, I'd just rather put a little bit of bait, drop my rig in and sit there and be quite patient. Obviously, if I'm not getting so many bites, I might have to throw a few maggots in. But just to start with, I'm just going to start with just putting a few maggots in. So, double maggot on the hook. And I'm sort of feeding somewhere in the region of 30 maggots. So quite a little bit of bait, but just enough where I can feed me bait, drop me rigging amongst it and sit and be patient and wait for a bite. So line it up with my marker, drop it nice and low to the water, just pop me bait in lift my bulk out, drop my bulk right where my bait's gone in and lower the float on it and wait for it to catch up and then when it catches up I'll just lower the last bit in nice and slow and hopefully catch another barbel or carp right so I had an early look short and it, it wasn't great. I caught a couple of fish, caught a barbel and a carp, but I felt like I'd probably gone in that too early. And because it's been so good across in two and a half foot, I thought I'll feed a little bit of bait down the edge. I just fed a little palm full of crushed expander and a few micras. And I'm just hoping now I might be able to go in and catch a few fish there because I feel like I need to give myself somewhere else to go. So I'll just go in and have my first go. I've just got my medium pot and I'm just going to sprinkle a few micras in again really nice here actually it's sort of the same depth quite tight to the pallet so I feel like we've got a good chance getting a bite especially the you know there's been some fish to be caught today so so I think the edges could be good I've, I've just stuck my first fish down the edge and it feels a reasonable fish so hopefully now We'll just be able to spend a bit of time there, keep throwing a few maggots short and maybe we'll get an arrival short, but if not, hopefully we'll just keep getting a few bites down the edge. Well, the nice thing about this lake, you don't need to catch loads of fish, you know, they're all good stamp fish and if you can have a few lines on the go now, like where I can get an odd bite, just tick along till the end I'll end up with a real good weight of fishing especially this time of year you don't tend to need a massive weight to be winning matches and to have a nice session you know lovely stamp of F1s in this lake cracking fish So I'm really catching well now down the edge and so what I've decided to do is swap to my clump pot and just try and catch a bit quicker again and just try and cut out any liners and come back with a fish as quick as I can. So 
I'll ship straight in, try and catch another hopefully, catch a few carp as we're getting on in the session now. And there is some big fish in here, so great stamp of fish in this lake, so just pop my micros in, keep drop my pot low to the water, let my micros force himself out the pot and just put my rig on it nice and accurate. Now fingers crossed for another bite. Definitely seems like this two and a half foot's been the right depth today and I think had we fished you know in a bit deeper water we might have caught some fish but I don't think we'd have caught the same stamp of fish as we have caught you know all our F1s and our fish have been real good stamp fish today. Another thing that's been interesting today is we We've tried to catch with maggots today, but it's just not felt like felt like we've had to feed quite a few times to get a response, and it's been like a lot slower. Whereas pellets, you could feed a bit of bait, be nice and patient, and get a proper bite, and it's been it's been really good. It's been definitely the best bait today. A little bit of crushed expander every now and again when the pegs dried up, and it's I've had pretty much steady bites when I have fish pellets. This is just all it, what it's about, trying to find the right right bait in the right depth of water. And then just try and keep a few lines going, keep busy, keep skipping about. I've just got another fish now down the edge. It's been a great line this has, since I've swapped on it. I think one thing that we're talking about is When you are playing decent fish, and just take your time, just take a couple of strips out with your puller. If the fish is coming towards you, just bring, keep it coming, and you should be able to net it quick. Like that one's just popped up there straight away. One thing that is worth saying, like coming back to floats, is I've had a proper explore about my peg today. I've fished a few lines across, and I've also fished in the edge, and the light's a bit different on every line. It's all a bit and you don't want to, have to be having to set up different floats and black floats and yellow floats for the different spots. So using a float with a reasonable thickness bristle, like a 1.5 mil bristle like these Maggie and Dink floats have, just enables you to see it everywhere you're going to drop it and you're not squinting to see it and you're making sure you're making the most of your peg by not wasting time through a match. I think that's something that a lot of people make the mistake of in winter is feeling like they have to fish really, really fine floats. And if you can't see it, you'll just waste a lot of time all day. You'll be lifting at bites that aren't bites. And it's just not the way to go, I think. Using a little bit thicker bristle, dotting it down, just enables you to see it wherever you're going to drop it. And I think that's so important because the light is normally bad this time of year. What's been interesting today is there's a lot of carp in this lake. It's probably mainly carp, but today we've had lots and lots of F1s and barb, and that's the nice thing about using baits like soft pellets, maggots. I could have come and fished something like hard pellets or fish bread, but it can be quite selective, and I'd probably miss out on a lot of these fish. So I feel like this time of year, just being nice and... Nice and uh, non-selective with your approach. Just try and get bites and see what's in your peg. And you can be rewarded with plenty of bites, even on a freezing cold day like today. Fantastic fish. Another great big F1. You won't want to miss out on them. Right, there we go. Brilliant day at Westwood today. Loads of F1s couple of barbel, couple of carp. Let's get him back. Just goes to show having the right rigs, the right bait, making sure you're fishing in the right depth and trying a few different lines. You can come to have a great day's fishing in the winter. Keep everything simple, 
pellets and maggots today, but pellets has been the best bait today for me. And this is what you're trying to work out quick into a session. And that's what we've done today. And it's ended up with a fantastic result. Get out there and get some fish caught.